this morning. Bring your petition before the Lord here today. Come. Gather in around this altar here this morning. Let us go to the throne of God today. Come on. Bring your petition. Bring your thanksgiving to God. Come on. Father, again, we want to thank you this morning for your love and your mercy today. We want to thank you for your goodness today. We want to thank you for another day of life, another day of mercy, another day of goodness, another day that you blessed us with. Thank God today. I'm, I'm so thankful this morning that, that, that you have given us the gift of life, and we just want to give you praise today. We, we're thankful that we can come together in this house today with people of like precious faith. We can come together today. It is an awesome, awesome opportunity we have here today to lift our voice to the living God, to raise our hands in praise, and, and to give you glory and to give you honor today. It is a privilege to be able to do that. It is an honor just to be able to lift our hands to you and to give you praise for your goodness in our lives. And we're just so thankful and grateful again for this Christmas season that you blessed us with. And, and to know that as we come together this time of the year, we, we come together to celebrate the birth of Christ and, and to know that you came to this world and when you came, you came for a purpose and you came for a reason. And I'm just so thankful and grateful today that you came for people just like us, people that were lost without God in this world, people that were alienated from God, people that were out of the commonwealth of Israel, people that were strangers to the covenant of hope, to the covenant of promise. But I'm thankful today that because of your finished work, because you came on purpose and you came for a reason, we've been grafted into the family of God. We've been, we've been accepted in the beloved today, and we're just so thankful and grateful to know that not only has our sins been remitted, but I'm thankful that our name has been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life to know, Lord, today that if the role is called of yonder, I'm thankful to God today to know that we'll be there, and we give you praise for that today, and we give you glory. And, Father, every name, every petition on that prayer list today, we bring before the throne of God. Every name that was on that list today that has a physical infirmity, I'm believing you to heal their body and asking you to move in their lives. Every unsaved individual on that prayer list today that needs Christ as their Savior, we plead the blood over today that eternal life is there and they will receive what's already been freely given today. I plead the blood over every unsaved individual in this room today. If there's one here today that doesn't know you as their Savior, that today before this last amen is given in this house today, that they will find this Christ child, that they will find this one that came into the world some 2,000 years ago and has turned the world upside down and inside out. And we give you praise today. And I pray this morning that you will have your will. You will have your way here today. Holy Ghost, come. We do in this house what needs to be done. We welcome you in this house today. We need you to come. We need you to get in our praise. We need you to help us create the atmosphere that you can have liberty in. That you can do what needs to be done in this house here today. I plead the blood over this platform today. That they'll be able to lead us into worship. They'll be able to lead us into your presence. But I pray for this house today. I pray for every individual back there in that pew. And Father, that they will not only be led, but they will follow. And they will follow into the presence of the living God here today. And when all this is said and done, and when the last amen has been given, I'm just believing, Lord, that you're going to be well pleased with what's happened in this place here today. Come, Holy Ghost, and do what needs to be done in this room here today. We gathered here today with people of like precious faith. We gathered here today to uplift the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We gathered here today to uplift him. For he said, if he would be uplifted, he would draw all men unto him. And that is our prayer here today. Is that every man and woman, boy, and girl, this house will be drawn to the living God. Will be pulled by the Holy Ghost to the living God here today. Breathe upon this house. Meet with us in this gathering today. Turn this social gathering into a place where we will meet the eternal here today. Oh, God, come Holy Ghost in this room here today. We bind every spirit in this house that is not of you. We bind every binding spirit, every spirit here this day that has showed up to try to steal the word of God. We bind right now in Jesus' name and release the very anointing of God into this house, the very presence and power of God to be breathed upon this room here today. Holy Ghost, come. Have your way today in this meeting. When all this is said and done, we'll give you praise and we'll give you glory. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Ah, my, my. Oh, blessed be God. Yes. 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 Y
Be good to anybody besides me. Oh, I got a couple of y'all back there waving hands. I got a couple of you all right. A couple of you act like you're all right. It's all right to wave your hand. It's all right to wave your hands. It's all right to say praise the Lord. It's all right to get happy and stand on your feet and shout. It's perfectly in order for you to even dance in the spirit. Amen. Praise God. 
Amen. I like it when the shower shows up, don't you? Amen. Of course, I can shout without the shower. I got too much to shout. I can shout on credit. Amen. Because I'm far, I'm way far behind on when it comes to the praising part. Amen. Praise God. Amen. When 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 Joshua took took the children of Israel to Jericho, the walls was up, was they not? And the walls didn't come down till the shout went up. Shout went up before the walls come down. Now I know we like to shout when the walls come down, but sometimes you got to shout on credit. Sometimes the shouts got to go up before the walls come down. Amen. Come on, don't y'all. Come on, don't y'all. Don't y'all do me like that. Come on, y'all. Some of y'all. Some of y'all wouldn't hurt y'all. Say that's right, Pastor. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Before I get started this morning in the morning's message, it, I, here's here's what I ask you to do. This morning, why don't you just get get out of your little old reserve cell today and. If the word blesses you while it's being preached, why don't you let the Lord know? Amen. Simply by audibly saying, amen, amen, praise the Lord, hallelujah, preach on preacher, or whatever you want to say, but at least acknowledge to him that you agree with his word. Not mentally assent to it, but verbally agree, this is his infallible word, and I praise you for your word today. How many of you try to do that? Give me, give me a wave. If, he, if, he, if you find yourself in this word today and it blesses you, well, let, let the Lord know it blesses you. Amen? Because when you let him know, you let me know. And if you let him know, you let me know, we'll I will be here all day. Amen. Not really. We're going to eat here after, after the service here this morning, all right? So let's not get in on her. We've got plenty of food down there. It's not going to spoil. We've got guards sitting over it. Nobody's going to steal it. So when we get done here, we'll go downstairs and we will partake of the, of the natural food. But before we go get the natural, we need to eat from the spiritual table of the Lord, okay? Can we do that? Amen. Got your Bibles? Go with me to the gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter number 2 this morning. I'll be there sometime after a while and we'll read a few scriptures here and there. And if you want to follow me in the Bible, that'll be fine. If not, why well, it will be on the screen, all right? This morning... I want to talk to you upon this thought today, if I possibly can, keeping the Christ in Christmas. I like that. Keeping the Christ in Christmas. You take Christ out of that, you ain't got no Christmas. Keeping the Christ in Christmas. Amen. Now, I believe that we all can agree this morning that the Lord has blessed each one of us with another Christmas season. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. One year ago, you was gathering some of you right in this very place a year ago, and the Lord has blessed you with another year and another Christmas season. Now, when you think about this Christmas season, it's a season that brings joy and meaning to many people, and yet it brings sadness and depression to others. To some, it is no doubt probably the highlight of the year. And to others, far from that. It brings a totally different picture and a totally different meaning to this time of the year. It's a season that the world has commercialized and put its emphasis upon this little fat man in the red suit that we call Santa Claus. And if we are not careful we too will get caught up in all the hustle and all the bustle and all the buying and going here and running there for this bargain and that bargain and buying this and buying that. And we'll get so caught up in the traditional part of this thing that for a moment we forget the reason for the season. And may I add one more thing to that as well as you know, Jesus is the reason for the season. So in all of your busyness and in all of your running here and there, please keep the Christ in Christmas. We are living in an hour when people are trying every way they can to take Christ out of Christmas. The world takes the holy days of and they replace it with something that will turn people's thoughts away from the true meaning of the holy day. We come in the house and we celebrate Easter. 
and the world brings in a bunny rabbit to, that lays eggs and, and we send our kids out to hunt those Easter eggs. It takes the mind, it takes people's mind up off of the resurrection, the greatest event of human history apart from the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the world is able to take that holy day and bring it down to a level that where it loses its true meaning. We come at this time of the year and we celebrate Christmas, the birth of Christ. And the world has taken a little fat man in a red suit that rides in a sleigh pulled by reindeer with presents in the back with elves as his helper. And somehow, some way, this man Santa Claus, he goes to every house in the world, gets on the roof of every house and comes down the chimney and leaves presents for every little boy and every little girl. I'm in the house this morning. The world's idea is to bring it down to a level that loses its true meaning. But brother, I need to tell you that if you and I will keep our focus on the true meaning of Christmas and keep Christ in the Christmas, it will not be just a mere meaning, but it will be the very life and breath that we draw. Because it is because of him that I live and breathe and have my being. It is because of him that I am breathing this morning. It's because of him that I'm living. It's because of him that I have my being. And I am not about to take Christ out of my Christmas. Glory to God. We've come to the place in this hour where the world, they don't even want you to say Merry Christmas. They want you to say Happy Holidays. Happy, 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 happy. Well, you can't be happy, happy, happy if you ain't got the happy road on the inside of you. Hallelujah. The only way Christmas can be merry is if you have Christ oh, in your Christmas. And if you ain't got Christ in the Christmas, then you ain't got Mary. Are you listening to what I... And I'm not talking about the Virgin Mary. I'm talking about being happy, happy, happy. As Brother Robinson would say. The world has tried... And you can, you can see it everywhere you turn. You turn the news on at this time of the year, and, 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 and we've offended the world, and, and somebody got offended because we say Merry Christmas. Well, let's just take Christmas out of it, and let's just say Happy Holidays. I'll fooey on you. I'm going to say Merry Christmas as long as I breathe, because I have Christ in my Christmas, and I know if I can get Christ in my Christmas, I can be Merry, 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 glory to God. Amen. In this hour, this world, the world has become very bold. They're forcing people right now to take down even, even the nativity scenes. They're forcing them to take them down. It offends the world. I was watching Bill O'Reilly the other night, a couple of nights ago, and he was he was interviewing an atheist on his program. And and and, and there were there, 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 there was some atheists and agnostics who had paid to put a message on, a, on the big screen in Times Square in New York City. And Bill O'Reilly had this atheist interviewing him on his program. And he said that when you walked into Times Square, Bill O'Reilly said that's the first thing that you saw was that big display on that, on that screen and the message that they had put on there. And the message was... Uh, who needs Christ in Christmas? Nobody. And they went on to say that Christmas is a time of fun and, and, and food and parties and all that. But when confronted and asked, why did you why did you put why did you do that? Why did you put that up? Nobody is forcing you to observe Christmas the way Christians do. So why do you attack Christmas when nobody is forcing you to observe it? A man could never give an answer. Could never give it. He, he, danced, around the, he danced around the question and Bill O'Reilly kept bringing him back to the, answer the question, why, why are you attacking Chris, Christmas when nobody forces you to observe Christmas? See, listen, listen to me. See, they're not offended at Santa Claus. Oh, God Almighty. They're offended at Christ that's in the Christmas. That's what they're offended at. You take Christ out of Christmas and you have no Christmas, period. No 
They're not offended at Santa Claus. They're offended at the Christ that is in the Christmas. So now, you tell me, which is better, Jesus or Santa Claus? Santa comes only once a year. But Jesus is with you always. Always until the end. Until the end of the world. Satan or, or Santa fills your stockings with goodies. But Jesus supplies all your needs according to his riches and glory. You have to wait in line to see Santa Claus. But Jesus is close as the mention of his name. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Santa lets you sit on his lap. Jesus lets you rest in his arms. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Santa comes to bring presents of toys and tools and clothes. But Jesus came that I might have life and have it more abundant. Santa doesn't even know your name. Oh, he can say his hi, little boy, hi, little girl. What's your name? But Jesus said, before I formed you in the belly, I, oh God, I knew you. And before you came forth out of your womb, I sanctified you and set you apart. Santa brings a gift that will soon wear out and lose its appeal. But God gave us the gift of eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. Santa puts his gift under the tree. But Jesus gives us the gift of living by dying on the tree. We tell our children to be good for goodness sake. For if they're good, you'll get gifts from Santa. But Peter said, repent and be baptized. Oh, God Almighty, every one of you for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, I would rather have that gift than anything Santa could bring me. As Jesus said, for what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? I don't know about you, but I'm thankful to God that it's not about what's under the tree, but it's all about who came to climb on that tree. I'm talking about the Christ in the Christmas. And you make up your mind, who would you rather have, Santa or Jesus? I believe if you'll run with Jesus, you'll get the better end of the deal. Because Jesus is a reason for the season. Keeping Christ in the Christmas. The Christmas story is all about a gift. A love gift. Huh. But here's the catch of A gift is of no value. Or no use unless that gift is received. Can you imagine a child on Christmas morning leaving his presents unopened? Carrie, can you imagine little Micah, little Kylie going down to the Christmas tree for their presents and never opening up their present to see what, what was under that tree? Think about that. I mean, they stayed up all night uh, with anticipation and, and excitement where they couldn't sleep. Uh, they was waiting for that break of dawn to where they could run downstairs or go, go in the other room to where the tree was uh, and get to that tree to, to get to that one gift uh, that was under that tree, that one gift uh, that they'd been waiting for months for that would bring them joy and contentment and purpose. Uh, and they run to that tree and stop and turn uh, and walk away without, with, without opening the gift to see what it really was? Can you imagine that? Yet multitudes of people will and are doing just that when it comes to receiving God's gift that God has sent to them because the gift that God sent can only be opened by repentance and faith repentance because we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God and faith because it's by grace through faith 
faith that you are saved not of yourselves it is the gift of God this gift has already been bought and already been paid for and you don't need to wrap this gift but simply unwrap it and see for yourself this great gift that God has sent to you David said it very well in the Psalms he said taste of the Lord and see if he be good there is evidence in this gift if you don't believe me look around this house I said there's evidence I said there's evidence in this gift I said there's evidence in this gift. It's out of another world because it took something out of another world to change some of y'all because some of y'all was a mess. We were all heathens and on our way to hell we were made up of drug addicts and alcoholics and whoremongers and liars and thieves and all of that. But thank God one day after a while you come to your senses and receive the gift that God has sent to you and you unwrap that gift and you, oh God Almighty, it's is anybody listening to me in this building? And once you unwrap that gift, you, re you received it by repentance and faith. You have never been the same since that day. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Keeping Christ in the Christmas. I'll be there in a little while. You just hang with me a little while. We're going to take our time here, Baker. We're going to leave here sometime today. Now listen to me. The Christmas story. It's all about love and all about forgiveness. How many of you agree with that? All about love and forgiveness for God. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he what? He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son to the world to condemn the world. But the world through him might what? Might be saved. I don't know about you but I'm thankful to God that Jesus did not come to this world to condemn me. I'm thankful to God that he took away my condemnation. He took away my guilt. He took away my shame and that's why I can stand here and boldly proclaim what Paul wrote in Romans 8 and 1 that there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. God Almighty loves you as if there was only one of you to love. He loved you as if you were the only person on the face of this earth to love because he chose you. You didn't choose him. He chose you of all the people in this world of all the people in this entire universe he showed up at your place he showed up at your heart and knocked on your heart's door and chose you of all the people he chose you I said of all the people he chose you he could have chose anybody but you but he chose you I thank God today that he didn't come to this world to condemn me. But thank God that through him I might be saved. I might be forgiven. Hallelujah to the Lamb of Almighty God. And God loved you as if there was only one of you to love. I love this scripture found in Romans chapter 5. Verse 7 and verse 8. Look, man, this is powerful. Paul said, for scarcely for a righteous man one will die. Yet peradventure, or perhaps for a good man, some would even dare to die. For a good man, some would even dare to die. For a righteous man, some will die. For a good man, some may dare to die. But God, I said, but God, I said, but God, a commitment of his love, a demonstrating his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for me and he died for you. I don't know if I got anybody listening to me or not. You may be too holy to raise your hand and too sanctified to say good glory to God. But I'm telling you this morning, you were just like I was at one time in your life. You wasn't even worth looking at. But yet the Lord God Almighty, while you were yet in your sins, while you were yet a sinner, Christ the God of all glory came and and died for you. Scarcely would a righteous man die 
for a righteous man. Oh, scarcely would they die for a good man. But God, I said, but God, I said, but God, I said, but God, I said, but God, God," went beyond all of that and came to the bar room and came to the crack room and came to the outhouse and the whorehouse and any other kind of house and got to where you was. Thank God Almighty. But God, I said, but God commended his love, demonstrated his love that while we were yet sinners, on our way to hell, he died for us. He didn't see you when you got saved. He seen you when you was out there cussing, drinking, drugging, hormonal, fornicating, shacking up. Well, I ain't going to be no church like preaching like him. What, what's wrong with you, preacher? <laughs> I'm telling you this morning. If you ain't got nothing to celebrate about, and if you ain't got nothing to say Merry Christmas about, I just gave you a reason right there to shout the walls of to shout the walls of this church down, honey. Because God, I said, but God, He demonstrated His love towards you, and while you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. Can I get a witness in this house? I said, can I get a witness in this house in this morning? Anybody glad that He died for you? Anybody glad that He came and gave His life for you? Christmas story is all about forgiveness. John 3, 17, For God sent not his son to the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. It's a story of forgiveness. After all, that was our greatest need, was it not? If our greatest need had been, had been information, God would have sent an educator. If our greatest need would have been from technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need would have been for money, he would have sent us an economist. But since our greatest need was for forgiveness, God sent us a Savior. Hallelujah. God sent us salvation. Because that was our greatest need, to be forgiven. Some of you here this morning, you, you haven't made that trip. You haven't made that trip to the cross to be forgiven. You can't imagine, I can't, I don't have the vocabulary. I don't have the ability to tell you how awesome it is to know that I have been forgiven by Almighty God. He put it in words. But this Christmas, it's the story of, of forgiveness. Luke chapter 2, verse number 11. Scripture says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David. A Savior, salvation, which is Christ the Lord. Now stay with me just a few minutes while we plow a little bit of ground on this. The only way that God could help man was to become man. And he did just that in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said it like this in Romans 8 and 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh... God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Paul wrote like this in Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 through 7. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Let me say it one more time. The only way that God could help man was to become man and he did just that in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch, he became like us so that we could become like him. I said he became like us so that we could become like him. Now think with me just for a moment. At Christ's birth, his birth, it brought God to man. Christ's birth brought God 
to man. Let me show you what it says in Luke 2, verse 25 through 32, talking about a man by the name of Simeon. Give me just a moment, we'll plow this thing out. Christ's birth brought God to man. Listen to this man named Simeon. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And it came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, they took him up, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Now let thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Let me say it one more time. Christ's birth brought God to me. But in it, fast forward this thing. But in his well, let, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Christ, let me, let, 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 let me give you an illustration. This is my, come here, Brother Bean. Come here, Brother Mike. Put your Bible down, come up here. Would you do that? Let, let me, let, 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 let me give you this illustration. Come on, boys, y'all walk faster than that. Y'all take up my time now. Go in to God. Stand right here. Get, you stay over there, stay over there. Stay over there. Stay, come, 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 come a little bit closer. Ho, 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 ho. Hold right there, hold right there. Hold right, hold right there. No, no, hold right there. Stick your arms out. Stick your arms out. Watch now. Don't, don't you stay right there. Watch now. Watch now. Christ's birth brought God to man. Watch that. But in his death, in his death, he was able to bring man to God. First Timothy chapter 2, verse number 5. Look at the scripture. For there is one God and one mediator between men and God, the man, Christ Jesus. Stay with me now. Stay with me. In his birth, he brought God to man. But man, man was still separated because of sin. And Jesus came and willingly and sacrificially climbed upon that old rugged cross. And he shed his life's blood. And they pierced his side. And out come water and out come blood and the mercy seat when Jesus gave that sacrifice he sprinkled the blood on the mercy seat of heaven and God the Father accepted the sacrifice and thank God Almighty in his birth he brought God to man but in his death he was able to bring man to God now watch now you see according to that scripture right there there has never been anybody so much like God and so much like man that he can literally reach over and put one hand on God and one hand on man and bring us into fellowship oh and bring us into fellowship with God Almighty. I'm telling you, you have a mediator. You have a go-between this morning. And it's all because of the Christ child. It's all because of that Christmas morning. Hallelujah. In a manger, in a town of Bethlehem, with the Savior came into the world and he brought God to man and he went over 32 years and made his way to Calvary and gave his life on the cross and through that death and sacrificial lamb he was able to bring man to God I don't know about you but I'm going to give him praise 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 because he will in a fall Hallelujah. Thank you, man. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm talking about keeping Christ in the Christmas. Honey, ain't nobody done you like Jesus has done you. I said, ain't nobody done you like Jesus has done you. Isaiah said it like this. Said over 700 years before, before it ever come to pass. Over 750 some years maybe. That before it ever come to pass. In Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Isaiah said it like this. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful. My, does anybody in this building, anybody in this building know him as a God of 
wonder, has he ever made a way for you where there seem like there is no way? Anybody know him as the God of wonder? I gotta have somebody help me here this morning. I said, anybody know him as a God of wonder? I, I say he said, and his name shall be called Counselor. How many of you know him as your consultant? Oh God, he'll be your lawyer when you're in a courtroom. He'll be your doctor when you're in the sick room. You don't have to go to a marriage counselor or to re or to rehab for Jesus can be your counselor. He can be your advisor. He can be your consultant because Jesus and only Jesus has your answer. Isaiah said he shall be called the mighty God. There's only one who can set a man free from the devil's grip. He's the almighty God. I said he's the almighty God and he can set every man, woman, boy, girl from any addiction that they may have in their life. The psalmist said it like this. He said God is terrible. In other words, he's bad. Our God is bad. Our God, there's none like our God. He's a mighty God and he's able to do what needs to be done in our lives. Isaiah said he shall be called the everlasting father. The world knows him as God, but for us that are born again, we know him as father, Abba father. Hallelujah. Isaiah said, and his name shall be called Prince of Peace. Aren't you glad as you know him as Jehovah Shalom, the God of your peace. Jesus said it like this in John 14, 27. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world I give you. Oh, listen, listen, listen. Before you can have the peace of God, you've got to have the God of peace. Are you listening to me? And Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Somebody give him praise. Amen. I said, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Over 700 years before Christ ever came on the scene, Isaiah prophesied that we would have a son, that a son would be given, a, a child would be given, a son would be born. He, the son would be given to us. And Isaiah said, his name shall be called Emmanuel. Uh, let me move on a little bit more. I go over to, I'll go over from Malachi to Matthew. There's over 400 years of darkness, 400 years of silence. Isaiah prophesied that over 700 years before Jesus ever come on the scene. And one of the first things that I read in Matthew gospel. Help me, Holy Ghost. Matthew recorded exactly what the prophet Isaiah talked about in Matthew chapter number 1 in verse number 23. Matthew said that behold a virgin shall be with child and bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. How many of you in this building can look back over this past year and you can see that Jesus has been your Emmanuel. I mean, he's been there through all the valleys and through all the dark seasons and the lonely nights. He was with you when nobody else was with you. When the enemy said that you'd never make it, you'll never get out of this. Oh, but the enemy forgot about Emmanuel when you was all alone. And the enemy says that you're alone and I got you now. But the enemy forgot about Emmanuel. He was there when I didn't have two nickels to rub together. He was there when I didn't have nobody else. He was there when that one walked out on me. And the enemy tried to bombard my mind with thoughts of fear and defeat and loneliness. But the devil forgot about Emmanuel. God with us. And he was just who they prophesied that he would be. He would be God with us. And that is exactly who has proved himself to me in my life. But hear me, but when Jesus died on Calvary and he cried out, it is finished. The Bible says that the veil was ripped from top to bottom, not from the bottom to the top, but from top to bottom, signifying that man had nothing to do with it. It was all God. And God split that veil from top to bottom, signifying that he no longer dwells in buildings made with hands, but he moved out of the Holy of Holies and moved on the inside of man and it's no longer God with us but God in us uh, Jesus said it like this 
in John 14, in 16 and 17. Jesus said, and I pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I got good news for you this morning. He's not only God with us, but he has moved a little bit farther and took one more step, and now he is God in us. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give him praise this morning, because the only way that you are where you are right now is because of Emmanuel. Some of y'all would have already beat the dust had it not been for Emmanuel. You would be where you are right now had it not been for Emmanuel. If the devil knew what he knew now, he would have killed you when you was in college. If he knew what he knew now when you was on your bed of affliction and had no idea what was going on, he would have took you out then. Oh, bless God Almighty. And maybe he may have planted those thoughts in your mind, but he forgot about Emmanuel. He forgot about the God that not only dwells with us, but dwells in us. Glory to God. Are you listening to what I'm saying this morning? I'm talking about a God that's moved out of the Holy of Holies and moved on the inside of your very heart. He walks with you. He talks with you. He moves with you. Where you go, he goes. When you're down, he gets you up. When you're lonely, he's your friend. When you need a savior, he's right there knocking on your heart's door, trying to get on the inside. Well, I'm gonna preach this morning. Y'all think I'm y'all think I'm not gonna preach today. I'm gonna preach today. Now y'all hang with me. Well. Still with me? I'm still talking about the Christ in Christmas. Keeping Christ in Christmas. Keeping Christ in Christmas. Can I preach a little while longer? I said, can I go a little bit more? I ain't got a whole lot more, so stay with me. Listen to the announcement. Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Listen to the announcement right real quick. And the angel said unto them, talking to the shepherds, fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. I love that. Which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Notice the announcement one more time. The angel said, I bring unto you good tidings, good news of great joy, which shall be, which shall come to all people. I, I thank God I didn't have to be of royalty to receive it. I thank God I didn't have to be of some social importance to receive it. I thank God I didn't have to be educated, wealthy, or of a certain race. But it shall be to all people. So that tells me that regardless of your background, regardless of where you've been, or regardless of what you've done, regardless of your problem or circumstances, regardless of which side of the tracks that you were born on, the good news, the good tidings a great joy shall come to all people. I don't know about you, but I've never found anything to compare to this joy. I don't know about you, but I can remember the first Christmas I ever spent with Jesus. You see, I spent 32 some odd years away from him, and I thought Christmas was all about drinking and partying and all that. I mean, I couldn't wait till we got off from work until we could get in some of that Jack Daniel. We could get in some of that Bud Light. We get in some of this light, that light, any other kind of light but the gospel light. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Oh, but Brother Mike, I remember that first Christmas morning when I woke up and I finally had the Christ in my Christmas. I've never been the same, Michael. I thought I found out what life was really about. I found out what Christmas was all about. It's not about giving toys. It's not about doing this or doing that. It's about who came to make it full of joy. It's about who came to give me a purpose of life. It's about one that came to give me life and give me life more abundant and give me eternal life. I can remember, Brother Gary, can you remember that first Christmas that Christ showed up at your house at Hanover? It was nothing like it, was it? I mean, it, I mean, I mean, I'm telling you right there, that scripture right there is, is for real. Honey, you can take that to the bank because that's what happened to every child of God the first Christmas morning they finally woke up and realized wait a minute, wait a minute this 
This ain't like it was last year. It ain't like it was the year before that. I got something different going on. I got something on the inside of me. And Moses rises up full of joy, full of peace. For it shall be to all people. They're getting tired of me. I'm going to keep on preaching a while. Though. Are you still with me? I bring you good news. Good God Almighty. Good news. A great joy which shall come to all people. All means you. Hey! All means you! The preacher, you don't know what I've done. It don't make a honky tonk what you've done. And it don't matter how many honky tonks you've been in. Ah, uh, Jesus, I tell y'all getting saved on me now, sanctified. Don't want to go there, do you? Don't want to go bar hopping now, do we? Let's get out of bars, preacher. Let's get back in the church house. All right, let's get back in the church house. We'll get out of bars for a while. Well, glory to God. But aren't you glad that first Christmas morning when Christ showed up as your Christmas? Aren't you glad you didn't have to go to, to the bar to get high? Aren't you glad, glory to God, it was somebody on the inside of you that gave you a gospel that got you higher than any drink you ever drank, any pill you ever popped, anybody you ever laid down with? Aren't you glad, glory to God? Aren't you glad that it came to all people? It showed up at your place. All people. Showed up at Hanover. Wow. Lingo Holler? Where's Lingo Holler at? McNeil County? Where is McNeil County? Mississippi? Where in the world is Mississippi? Ceiling. He didn't have to stop at your house. I'm not talking about Santa Claus. He took the time out to choose you. For this great joy could come to you. Wow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't know if I got anybody with me now or not. I think I don't mind everybody, man. Lord, I'm going to knock all the breath out of it. Are you still with me? Can I, can I go 10 more minutes? How about 15? Can I have 15? Can I have 20? Can I have 21, 21, 21? Give me a minute. Just, just, just a minute. Give me just a few minutes. I promise I'll be done. I won't be long. I promise I'm not. Listen now. Watch me. Go back. Go back to Bethlehem's manger right real quick. Go back to Bethlehem's manger. Because I can see the glory of God in the cradle. This is what we'll say now. When it comes time for the baby's dedication, notice this. Notice they brought him. They, they brought him to Jerusalem. We just read about Simeon. Let me touch on that right real quick. Simeon, a righteous man, a devout man, and Simeon was looking for the consolation of Israel. And the Bible says that the Holy Ghost was upon him. Are you with me? I'm losing half my crowd right now. They're all they're all getting up and leaving on me now. <laughs> I get down to the most important part, and they're all gone. I got news for them. They're not going to eat. We're not going to eat for a while, so they just went down there for nothing right now. I got to get you back to them. I stay with me. Watch now. Watch, 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 watch. Watch this. Watch. Stay with me. Just give me just a few minutes and I'll be done with this thing. Watch, 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 watch. Simeon. The Bible says that, 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 that he was a righteous and devout man. And the Bible says that he was there in the temple looking for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Christ. And the Bible says that he came, he came by the Spirit to the temple. And Mary and Joseph had brought the baby in to have him circumcised. And Simeon took the baby up in his arms. And the Bible says he blessed God and said, Lord, now you can let your servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation. Listen to what I'm going to say. Folks, listen to me. The goodness and that great joy came to Simeon. Listen to me. And like Simeon, you can depart in peace when you see and behold his salvation. I don't know if you're in here with me now or not. Anybody, hear this preacher, anybody remember remember back to the first Christmas that you had with Christ in Christmas, huh? Listen to me. Simeon, when he, when, when he held salvation, when he held the Savior, when he held God in the flesh, think about that. I'm talking about a man that literally held God, literally held 
God incarnate in a form, in a body, clothed in flesh. And Simeon held him. And he said, Lord, you can let your servant depart in peace now. My eyes have seen thy salvation. Listen to me. Come to me right now. I got to lay this down here and lay it down real good. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are at, what station of life you're in. Just like Simeon, you can leave here with the peace of Almighty God abiding and living on the inside of you. If you will put Christ in your Christmas, he will bring peace that's unspeakable and full of glory. He'll bring the peace of Almighty God in the midst of everything going on in your life. Well, that's not the end of the story. Because there was a prophetess there by the name of Hannah. Ada or Anna, not Hannah. <laughs> Anna. And the Bible says she was a widow for 84 years. Watch. And the good news and the great joy came to this 84-year-old widow named Anna. <laughs> Can I get a witness in this house from some widows? <laughs> That says, yes, sir, preacher, that's some good news and great joy that come to my way. Can I get any witness from any witness in this? Have I got any witness in here tonight, today? Well, I got one right there. I got one right there. I got one One only knows what I'm talking about. Thank you. Susie? Anna, see, they're asleep. They're not paying a bit of attention to it. Anna was in the temple. Served there. 84 years a widow. With prayers and fastings. Good God Almighty. And, and, and she walked in at the instant that Simeon was, 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 was blessing Jesus. And as he was speaking, Anna walked in. And the Bible says that she gave thanks likewise in verse 28 of Matthew 2, verse 38. She gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him all that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Now watch this, watch, watch, watch. Let me ask you a question. She was there and she began to share all those that was looking for redemption in Jerusalem. My question to you is this, sir, man, come to me, I'm almost done. My question to you is this, what are you looking for this Christmas? Hey, I got a good idea. What about redemption? I said, what about redemption? You can't buy this. It's already been bought. It's already been purchased. Your redemption. All you have to do is receive it. And if every winner would stand up and testify this morning, they would say exactly what Anna said. That this is good news and great joy that showed up in my house. When all hell came against me and my life was crumbling down and my world came tumbling in, had it not been for that good news, had it not been for that great joy that came up to my place, when all hell broke loose and my world came tumbling in, I don't believe I would have ever made it. I don't believe I'd ever come through it. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful to God this morning that he still looks after his widows. He still looks after the women and men of God that will trust him and put him in their Christmas. I'm telling you, he's still the God that will show up and show off and meet the need of your life. Listen to this preach. I'm almost done. Watch that. One more place. One more place. One more place that the good news reached. One more place that this great joy reached. And the Bible says the Bible says that after Jesus was born, the Bible says that the angel appeared unto, unto the wise men. Remember that story? Remember, remember that story? Well, it's, still, it's in your Bible. It's in your Bible. And the good news and the great joy came to the wise men who returned, watch now, to their own country. Watch now. When Jesus, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the Bible says that that wise men came from the east of Jerusalem, right? Now watch now. King Herod had given them permission to leave and to seek the king that had been born. And Herod said, Herod said, I want you to go and find the king. I want you to come back the same way you went. And I want you to tell me where he is because I want to go and I want to worship the king. Well, we know Herod was a liar. He didn't want to worship the king. He wanted to kill 
a king. He didn't want to worship the king, but he sent those wise men to find the king, and he told them to come back the same way you went and tell me where this, where this king is. And the Bible says that after these wise men found Jesus and they spent some time with him, here's the thing I want you to get out of this. In verse number 12 of Matthew chapter 2, after they found Jesus and spent some time with Jesus, the Bible says that they departed into their own country was another way. In other words, men that come to Jesus don't return the same way because Jesus never leaves you the same way that he finds you. Now there's a message in that little part right there that they returned another way because some of you are just like them wise men because wise men still seek the Christ of Christmas and when they find him, they always return another way. They never go back to say, I ain't got nobody in here right now, but I, I may have to go back to the barroom and preach a little while because some of y'all need to go back and remember who you were and where you came from because when you came to the Christ child, he didn't leave you the same way that he found you. You went back another way. I said you went back another way. Aren't you glad you didn't go back to hand over the same way you came that Sunday morning? Is anybody glad for the change that Jesus has made in your life? And one day you returned, but you didn't return the same way. You returned another way. And the wise men, wise men still seek the Christ of Christmas. It don't take a man to get drunk, smoke dope, and run around with all the harlots. It don't take a man to do that. It takes a man to stand for righteousness, godliness, holiness and put Christ in Christmas before his entire family and say as for me and my house we going to serve the Christ of Christmas <laughs> praise God I got to get I got to get got to get what's that what what I got to wrap this up I got to wrap this up what's that what these wise men these wise men they they found the Christ child now what's that what and and, 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 and and they began to present the presents to the king. All right, now, watch this, watch this, watch. Before they left to find him, a star, watch that, watch, a star appeared, right? And, and watch that, watch. And, and the Bible says that the star that appeared would lead them to the Savior, would lead them to the Christ child. Watch that, watch, come here, come here, come here, come here, come, 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 come. Jesus could have been as much as two years old time the wise men got there. And listen, listen, listen. And as they made their way toward the Christ child, think about this. Through the heat of the day and the cold of the night, mile after mile, day after day, week after week, month after month, you know they would have had tried to, they would have had to got tired and weary along the way. But the star. The star would remain. And I believe at the times when they got tired and weary and thought they were just chasing some kind of a dream, I, I really believe that that's when the star began to gleam and seemingly come alive as it was over the Christ child. And the star, it would begin to draw these men to the Savior. The star would draw these men to salvation. But after these wise men arrived, watch, and they found the Christ child, the star seemingly disappears. But there's something else that begins to erect on the horizon that would draw men to this same Christ. It's called the old rugged cross, a cross that bleeds, a cross that redeems and rescues men from all their miseries. You see, the star star could not do what the cross did. The cross begins to draw men to life. Jesus said I've come that you might have life and have it more abundant. And he became that sacrificial lamb. And he said I lay my life down voluntarily. And no man taketh my life from me. And if I have power to lay it down I have power to take it up again. And that's why he said because I live you can live also. Are you listening to what I'm saying. After the wise men found Jesus, the star disappeared. But if you keep reading the gospel, there's something else that would rise up in the horizon.
horizon. And that was the old rugged cross. What the cross could do for men, the star could not do. The star led them to the Savior, to the Christ child. But the cross of Calvary will lead you to eternal life and forgiveness and redemption for your sins. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I'm getting ready to close. I need you to get up here right real quick. Now the last part of this story i got to cover right quick while they get ready. Now listen to me. Don't put your eyes on them because I'm getting ready to close. But I need to close this message out with the last part of this Christmas story. And I believe with all of my heart that the saddest part of this Christmas story is in those words in Luke chapter 2 verse number 7. Now what y'all do, y'all do real quiet. Now don't, don't disturb me. The saddest part of this Christmas story that man right there mentioned it in his opening statement in this house. The saddest part of the Christmas story is found in Luke chapter 2 verse number 7 where they said and recorded uh, that there was no room for them uh, in the end. Now listen to what I'm going to say. Because some 2,000 years later for many people there's still no room for Jesus in their lives. Uh, they participate in the Christmas festivities. Uh, they shop uh, and they give uh, and they share their love uh, but they keep him out of their lives. Uh, hear me. Uh, the sole purpose for him coming they reject and they say no room and how sad it really is when people will make no room for the greatest gift that a man or a woman can ever receive from almighty God and you'll not find this gift under a tree no sir he came to hang on a tree he came he chose to die that you might live so my question is how about you out there this morning is the room Room in your life for the Christ of Christmas is the room. What Jesus said it like this: What would it profit a man if it gained the whole world and lose his own soul? Please hear me this morning. The saddest part of this whole Christmas story is when you read those words that there was no room for them. And the sad thing of it is, some of you here this morning, you still have not made room for the most important part of your life. It's not your wife. It's not your children. It's not your job. It's not your retirement. It's wrapped up in the Christ of Christmas. Please, in the name of all common sense, will you please make room for Jesus this Christmas season on this Sunday of December the 15th, 10 days before Christmas. Will you make up your mind today that you're going to make room for the most important important gift that you can ever receive in your life and that is the Christ child and you can leave here and keep Christ in your Christmas I'm looking at some of y'all and I said I should have quit an hour ago some of you are far far too busy you got room for everything else but the most important gift that God could, you could ever receive. Friend, listen to me. Listen to me. What are you going to do when you stand before the Lord? And there's no excuse that you're going to give that will get you out of an eternal hell. If you continue to reject God's precious gift. He stood at your heart's door and knocked on him time. And you're just like those there in Matthew chapter 1. There's no room for you. But when will there be room? When you're laying in the hospital and tubes are hooked up all over you, you ain't got enough, you ain't got enough mind to say your name. And some preacher like me go in and pray and beg God to give you one more chance. I've been there. I've wept over people in hospitals and had tubes sticking everywhere they could stick them. And had no idea whether they'd ever made right things right with God. Their problem was just like your problem. They just simply hadn't made room for me. You can make room for me if you will. I 
I don't know how you could possibly say no after all he's done for you. No individual work missing heaven and going to hell is not. Hell is real. Jesus died and went there so you wouldn't have to go there. And over 2,000 years ago, God sent his most precious gift that he could send to humanity. <laughs> And yet there's far too many people still don't have any room. Today I ask you, I beg you, will you make room for him today? Please. Don't hurt the heart of God, okay, no? Don't break the heart of God today. One more time, say no. It's been far too good to me. Some of you are going to get another Christmas day, and all them little young ones you have, all them little babies going to gather around that tree and celebrate Christmas. The best thing old dad could do would be gather them up. Gather them up in his arms. Just begin to thank him. The God of glory. For blessing his family. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man, woman, or girl will open up, I'll come into him and sup with him and he will. Today I ask you, if you don't have Christ in your Christmas, will you, will you let him come in? Will you? Please. Only you know whether he is or not. He has so much for you. Receive it. This gift isn't it, any good if you don't receive it. If you'll just receive it and open it up, oh God, you'll never be the same. Ever. Would you stand with me all over the house? Please don't nobody leave, please. Don't nobody talk, don't nobody move. Just stand with me, reverence the Holy Spirit of this morning, would you? He's settled upon us right now. This morning he's calling you. Will you come? Will you make room for him today? Would you? Make room for him today, would you? Sing it, sing. Come on. Come on all over the house. Take come on. Take a minute. Come on. Come on. Today. December 15th. 2013. Come on, Jesus. Oh, uh -huh.